Welcome to the CAD Office Trading Guide series for F.Civil 3D. My name is Mike Rocca and I'm a CAD Application Support Specialist with the Florida Department of Transportation. Today I will be going through the F.Civil 3D Drainage Training Guide. In the series of videos I will take you step by step through each exercise from the guide. Today we'll start with Chapter 16, Defining Catchment Areas. In this chapter you will create catchment areas for the inlets and the closed drainage system for the pavement. In this chapter, you'll learn about creating closed polylines to represent catchment area geometry for each inlet, defining catchment areas from polylines, assigning inlets to catchment areas, labeling catchment areas. Run the chapter 16.exe file and restore all files to C Civil 3D Projects folder. Do not change the location in which the practice files are installed. Doing so can cause errors when completing the exercise in this training manual. Start the F.Civil 3D State Kit and open drprrd04.dwg, located in the Chapter 16 Dataset Drainage folder. Exercise 16.1 Boundary Line Creation for Catchments. As shown in the previous steps, associate the drawing to the 2204955201 project by right clicking on the data shortcuts and choosing Associate Projects to Current Drawing and then click OK. As shown in the previous chapter, unload some xreferences from the current file. On the command line, type xref to open the xref manager. Unload the following files. drmprd01 dsgnrd01 Click on the X in the top left hand corner to exit out of the External References dialog box. Next, reset PDM mode to zero. On the command line, type PDM mode. Press Enter. Type in zero. Press Enter to exit the command. The drawing should have smaller AutoCAD points. Next, you will change the final surface display to no display. From the tool space on the prospector tab, expand the surfaces category. Right click on SR61 final and choose surface properties. From the surface properties SR61 final dialog box, select the information tab. From the surface style drop down list, select no display. Click Apply, then click OK. Next, from the Home tab on the Ribbon Layer panel, select the Isolate button to flatten catchment polyline to an elevation of zero. On the command line, you're prompted to select objects on the layers to be isolated or settings. Select the settings option. On the command line, you're prompted to enter settings for layers not isolated, off, lock, and fade. Select the off option to set the behavior on the command line to turn off the unrelated layers when completed. On the command line, you're then prompted to in paper space viewport, use the VP freeze off or select the off command. Select the viewport setting VP freeze. On the command line, you are prompted to select objects on the layer to be isolated. Select the line on the drainage divide 01 layer. Next, select one of the green 3D polylines. The command line history logs each selection made. Press Enter to complete the command. 
The results are all layers are turned off except the selected layers. Hover over the 3D polyline to confirm you have the correct objects displayed. The 3D polylines at the terrain model elevations. Next, create 2D closed polylines using the boundary command. We want to create 2D closed polylines using the boundary command. The boundary command requires all objects to be at the same elevation. To do this, we need to change all the 3D polyline vertices to elevation 0 at each vertex. The lines on that layer, drain, divide, 01, are at elevation 0. First, flatten all objects before moving to the boundary creation. Select a 3D polyline, right click, and then choose Similar, or Select Similar. Notice that all 3D polylines are now selected. Next, use the Flatten command to set all vertices. The Boundary command used to create closed polylines requires 2D polylines. We will use the Flatten command to tell all vertices at the selected 3D polylines to elevation 0. On the command line, type in flatten and press enter. The command line asks if you'd like to remove hidden lines. Select no and press enter. Or type in no. Next, select the 3D polyline, right click and choose Properties. The property palette is displayed. Notice the vertex Z elevation is 0. Click on the X on the top left hand corner to close the property box. Then press Escape to clear all the grips. Zoom to display all the watershed geometry on the screen. The boundary command requires all enclosed areas to be fully visible. With all geometry now at elevation 0, at the command line type in boundary. And then press enter. The boundary creation dialog box is displayed. Next, click pick points. Start at the north side of SR61 alignment. An enclosed area is visible and formed by the 3D polyline and a line on the drain divide 00, zero layer. Click inside the enclosed area. The perimeter of the area selected will highlight. Move your cursor over to the next enclosed area and click. Repeat the process for the remaining enclosed areas. Notice the cover placement in each one. Click close to close the boundary, boundary definition error dialog box. Continue creating boundaries. We'll correct those errors later. Press enter after clicking in the last enclosed area. From the home tab on the ribbon, under layers property panel, select unisolate command. Isolate the drain divide 01 layer so it is the only visible collection on the screen. Backing up a couple of steps, if you weren't able to create the boundary for these two areas, try zooming in with your cursor a little bit. Instead of doing zoom extent, zoom in a little bit closer. Then try typing in the boundary command again. And then picking the points 
and then pick it inside the areas. And if they don't work again, just try zooming in a little closer. Make sure that the areas fit inside your screen. And then press Enter. Next, go ahead and go back to the Layer Isolate command. And then select your Drain Divide Lines. And pressing Enter. Your drawing should look like the image below. Next, erase the lines drawn in the previous chapter that help divide the catchment areas. Select one of the lines. Right click to display the shortcut menu and choose Select Similar. With all the lines highlighted with grips, press Delete. Run the unisolate command again to turn on all the layers. Verify the surface style is set to no display. Prepare the drawing for selecting polylines and inlets by verifying the surface style is set to no display. Right click on SR61 Final on the Information tab. Under Surface Style, verify that no sp display is selected. And then click OK. By setting the surface style to no display, the watershed boundaries will not get in the way of our selecting the polylines on the Drain Divide 01 layer. Next, turn on all the layers in the drawing. On the Home ribbon, under the Layers panel, click on the Turn All Layers On button. Exercise 16.2. Create catchment groups and individual catchments. Now you will create catchment groups and populate them with the individual catchments. Zoom into the northern end of your area of interest and begin creating catchment areas. From the analysis tab on the ribbon, on the catchments pull down list, select create catchment groups. From the Alignment Group dialog box, type Catchment Group SR61 right in the name field. Click Apply, then OK to close the dialog box. Repeat the command to create Catchment Group SR61 left. Then click Apply and OK. Review the newly created catchments. Create catchments for each structure. Now you create catchments for each structure within the appropriate catchment group. From the, analysis, from the Analyze tab, in the Catchment drop-down list, select Create Catchments from Objects. On the command line, you are prompted to select polyline for catchment area boundary. With the selection cycling on, Select the polyline boundary in closing S10. Press Escape to skip selecting the flow path polylines. In the Create Catchment from Object dialog box displays, make the following changes. Set the catchment group to catchment group SR right. Change the runoff coefficient to 0 0.9 zeros. Click the Select Reference Structure button next to the Reference Pipe Network Structure 
Options. The command line prompts you to select pipe network structure. Select structure S10. Click OK to close the dialog box. Notice the area label is centered in the catchment area. On the command line, you are still in the create catchment command. Repeat the steps for the following structures. S11, S12, S13, and S16. Change the catchment group to group SR61 left and repeat the steps for the following structures. S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, S7, S8, and S9. Review catchments. Expand the catchments collection in the prospect to review the catchments groups in individual catchment areas. The name of the catchments will be named in the next exercise. Exercise 16.3, Rename Catchments. Rename the catchments to match the corresponding structure numbers. Select the catchments boundary to activate the blue grips for structure S-16. From the context sensitive menu, under Catchment Properties, drop down list, select Edit Catchment Properties. From the Catchments Property dialog box, select the Information tab. The tab displays the name of the catchment and the catchment style used. Change the name to Structure S 16. Next, from the Catchments Property dialog box, select the Catchments Property tab. Notice the name on the reference pipe network structures S16. Verify that the runoff coefficient is set to 0 0.90. Click Apply, then OK to close the dialog box. Next, we're going to edit a name using a different but quicker method. From the tool space on the Prospector tab, expand Catchments. Expand the catchment group SR61 left. Right-click on Catchment 6 and select Properties. From the Catchments Property dialog box, select the Catchments Property tab. Review the reference pipe structure and set the runoff coefficient to 0 0.90. From the Catchments Property dialog box, select the Information tab. Change the name to Catchment S1. Click Apply, then OK to close the dialog box. Using the method above, rename all of the catchments to the appropriate structures. Use the renaming table below for reference. After renaming the catchments, review the end results list of the catchments which should display on the settings tab or the prospector tab. Notice when the task is complete, the area labels display in each catchment. Catchment's names match the inlet structure name, so there is no need to label the name of the catchment areas. When you're done, save and close the DRPRRD0 file. This ends Chapter 16.